In this video, I'm going to show you every single feature you can use at the very start of your YouTube journey. Even with zero views and zero subscribers, there are a ton of things you can do beyond just press and record and uploading videos. And I bet all of you watching this video that there are some features you've never seen before. These features are divided up into three tiers and we'll start with the standard ones. These are the things that you can do the moment you create a YouTube account. And we'll start with the most important one of them all, uploading videos. This sounds almost too obvious, doesn't it? Yes, you can upload long form videos and shorts straight away, but not live streams. We'll get back to them in a second. Now, what you might not know is that you can only upload videos to a maximum length of 15 minutes and there is a limit to how many videos you can upload. I have to confess, I had no idea this was a thing until I started researching for this video and I couldn't find anything in the support pages beyond this wording. At this point, I did the only rational thing anybody would do and ask YouTube support. And they weren't terribly helpful. What does this mean? The best advice I can give you is don't upload a silly amount of videos and you shouldn't see this warning. And if you do, just give it 24 hours. But I am genuinely fascinated to know whether or not anyone has hit this limit and how did they do it? So let me know in the comments below. Other bits of housekeeping around uploading videos includes being able to upload 15 videos at any one time. Who does that? And the maximum limit for a single video is 256 gigs and 12 hours of length. And that's important for live streams. If your live streams are longer than 12 hours, then they won't convert into video on demand. The other feature you get right out of a YouTube gate is the ability to create playlists and add collaborators to playlists and add new videos to playlists. Yay, I have literally nothing else to add at this point. Let's move on, shall we? If you're wondering where all of this information is coming from, by the way, I've linked all of the support pages referenced in this video in the description, which is just below that delicious like button that's certainly worth clicking since you're there. But just before we look at some more YouTube features, let me remind you that vidIQ has a ton of tools and features that you can use before you even create your YouTube channel. Our browser extension can analyze every single video on YouTube, both from a data and content perspective. And our web applications include tons of tools around idea generation, keyword research, and loads more. You can sign up and download vidIQ for free, either through the clickable link in the video description or via the pinned comment to YouTube features we're about to talk about very soon. And now we can move on to the next tier of YouTube features where things start to get really interesting. But first of all, you need to know which tier of features you currently have access to. So in the YouTube studio, go to settings, then channel, and finally feature eligibility. This will show you what your channel is currently enabled for. And if you haven't done anything yet, you'll just have a standard features we've already spoken about. And to unlock the next tier of features, you don't have to upload any videos, get any views or any subscribers, but you do need to verify your YouTube account with a phone number. Of all of the things you learn and do in this video, this by far and away is the most important one because it gives you access to mission critical features. Uploading videos of any length up to 12 hours is one of them, but far more important than that is the most important marketing tool you have at your disposal on YouTube, creating custom thumbnails. It's the first thing a viewer sees when they find your content and it needs to catch their attention. Some would argue that packaging, the thumbnail and title, is just as, if not more important than the video itself. So you want this feature as soon as possible and it's about to get even more powerful. That's because YouTube are rolling out a test and compare feature where you can upload up to three thumbnails per video to test which performs best. As of time of recording, we're not sure when this additional feature for custom thumbnails will be made available or if there'll be any additional requirements to unlock it. But the bottom line is custom thumbnails are essential to your YouTube success and growth. For long form videos, anyway, for shorts, it's not that important. Just like videos, custom thumbnails have a daily upload limit. And there is a little bit more information about this that you can see on screen now. Channel history, your country, and whether or not you have copyright strikes all impact the daily limit, whatever it is. Now, when it comes to live streaming, the rules are a bit weird. On a computer, the first time you try and do a YouTube live stream, it will say that you need to request access and then wait 24 hours. However, on mobile, if you try and go live, it will tell you that you need 50 subscribers first, even though the support page doesn't say that. So go figure. There is also the relatively new edition of vertical live streams that have its own set of rules, which are on screen now. They differ quite a lot from horizontal live streams, so bear all of this in mind the next time you decide to press the go live button on a whim. It probably won't come as a surprise to you at this point to know that there is a limit on live streaming as well. 
but I don't know what that limit is, so I asked YouTube support again. What? Podcasts are a relatively new thing to YouTube, but certainly a great feature for creators who are into this sort of thing. Basically, what you do is create a playlist that acts as a podcast series and then upload all of your videos into, I guess you would call a podcast playlist. Creating a dedicated podcast will grant you all of these discovery perks. But the thing to bear in mind is that the podcasts are still videos. You can't just upload MP3s. There needs to be a video component attached to it. Related Videos is a YouTube Shorts feature that lets you bake a video link into the short, linking it to one of your long form videos. I would best describe this as a peace offering from YouTube to creators after a major feature was removed from YouTube Shorts. And I'll let you know what that is shortly. Now, just remember, you've unlocked all of these features and technically you haven't uploaded any videos yet. And there's yet more to discover through advanced features if you're willing to submit some personal details to YouTube. There are a few ways to do this. You can video verify your channel by looking at your phone's camera and following the prompts or you can submit valid ID like a driver's license or passport. Both of these are pretty privacy heavy. So what most creators do is establish channel history. This is achieved by just being a creator, basically uploading videos, engaging with your community, showing YouTube you're not here to cause trouble. And I wouldn't describe any of these as imperative features, especially if you've just started your channel with zero views and zero subscribers, but they're all nice to haves. And the nicest one of them all to have, at least in my opinion, are community posts. This basically is a social feed for your channel where you can post status updates, pictures, polls, and quizzes. It's a fantastic way to engage with your community, especially when there are gaps in between when you publish videos. And these community posts take five minutes to create as opposed to five hours, five days, or five weeks that videos take to make. Again, in the documentation, limits are mentioned and that you can use the community tab as a standard YouTube feature but elsewhere in the support pages, it says you need advanced features enabled. I do feel for YouTube, it must be an absolute nightmare trying to maintain all of this information and keep it correct. As you grow your channel and hopefully a business out of that channel, there are often times you'll want to take viewers off the YouTube platform to sell products and services. A clickable external links are one way to do that. And this is unlocked with advanced features. And as you can see, there are a ton of rules around where clickable links can and can't go. YouTube Shorts is one place links can't go. And that's why I mentioned earlier, YouTube's peace offering with a related links feature when they pull back clickable links on YouTube Shorts. The pinned comment feature is useful to have too, allowing you to pin any comment on the video to the very top of a comments list. This could be an awesome comment from someone in the community or a comment from someone you collabed with or one of your own comments when you can be really intentional with the call to action. With this feature, if any of your videos get a content ID claim, you can dispute it if you have a valid reason. The workflow looks like this. So if you go up there, down there and turn right, bingo, the claim will be lifted. Content ID appeal is the precursor to content ID claiming when you can protect your content from others ripping it off. You'll get that feature when you monetize your channel. More on that in a moment. Not much to say about this one other than this feature allows you to embed YouTube live streams directly into a website with all of these bits of code. And next on the list, we have RSS uploads. You don't know what that is, do you? It's all right, neither do I. What it actually does is deliver the audio portion of YouTube podcasts to people who subscribe to podcasts through RSS feeds. And all of the details are here on how to set it up. And do you know what RSS stands for? Really simple syndication. Consider yourself educated. So remember, going back to the original premise of this video, all of these YouTube features are available to all creators when they start their YouTube channel. Yes, you need to jump through a few hoops to unlock everything, but you're going to have to do it at some point anyway. And that's because one of the requirements for monetization is that you unlock advanced features for your channel. Uh, typically, this is done when people unlock intermediate features and then wait a couple of months to get the channel history, which automatically unlocks advanced features. So you probably won't have to do too much other than verifying your phone number on your account. And if all of this has whetted your appetite for monetization, this is a complete guide on how it works.